What is going on investors? Hope you guys are doing well out there. Earnings season moving right along and today we're going to be talking about Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Now it's a long name but it's a company with a long history and I think you can make the argument that TSM might be the most important company in the world, at least from a public perspective. If this company goes away, it throws a wrench in a lot of different things. And so this is a very important company and very important earnings as well. The company reported their Q1 earnings before the bell today. We'll get into them. We'll dive into the numbers. We'll take a look at the revenue, the profit, and all those different things going on at Taiwan Semiconductor. Now, they also gave us a conference call as well. Read through the conference call. I'm going to point out a couple of different things. We'll talk about the Arizona fabrication plant that is under construction construction as we speak. We'll talk about that. We also get a window into, this is very much like the financial sector. When JP Morgan reports or Bank of America reports or Morgan Stanley, you get a window into the consumer or into corporate or whatever. Same thing with TSM. You're getting a great window into other technologies. And I tell you what, CC gave us just an absolute fantastic quote about demand across the entire technology sector. You're definitely going to want to see that. We'll talk about smart smartphone shipments. Smartphone shipments have been under pressure. That is no surprise to anybody that has been following Apple as year to date. Apple has not ridden the wave like a lot of other stocks down over 13.2%, whereas a company like TSM is up 27% over the same time frame. And then we'll also look at this from a technical perspective. We've got a beautiful buying opportunity that I think will materialize over the next probably three to four months or so if we were to give it a time frame, maybe even sooner than that. And if you get that opportunity, I think you probably should take it because again, not only one of the world's greatest companies, but potentially maybe the most important company in the world. Now, year to date up 27% over the last year, up 58% over the last five years. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride, but you're up 190%. Now, the company reported their Q1 earnings revenue coming in at 18 point, we'll just call that $18.9 billion. That was up 13% year over year. They did beat expectations by about $860 million. Now, the question comes, what's the outlook for TSM? I tell you what, it is epically strong for this company. We did ASML yesterday, certainly don't have this type of sales growth. For the Q2, you're expecting 23% year over year growth, up over $19 billion. Then, like ASML said yesterday, that the second half of the year, and TSM kind of uh, insinuated that on their conference call as well, they're thinking the second half of the year is going to be stronger, really more or less across the board, and you're seeing it. 30% sales growth in Q3, 20% sales growth, topping nearly $24 billion in that fourth quarter, and then we wrap things around into next year, calendar year 2025, first quarter a year from now. 20.5% growth up to $22 billion. So in a year's time, we're expected to go from about $18.9 billion all the way up to $22 billion. That is obviously low 20s, even low 30% growth rate going forward on a stock that is a, has a forward price to earnings multiple of just 22. And I say just with that type of growth multiple and the type of moat and the type of business that this company is conducting, Tell you what, that's not that bad. Now, the company said a lot of different things on their conference call. One interesting thing that was brought up by analysts was, hey, NVIDIA is making money hand over fist on this AI stuff. And they'll talk about that here in a second, how AI is just absolutely crushing for TSM, but they're not really seeing that flow all the way down into TSM's earnings and their gross margins. And TSM just says, hey, we're glad our partners are doing well. We're glad people are doing well out there. They're a partner in this situation. And while competition will likely come forth over the next decade from Intel, maybe other foundries out there, TSM operates very closely with their partners at AMD, NVIDIA, and Apple. And those long-term relationships, they're not going to show up on the financials. They're not something that you can put onto paper. Maybe from an intangible value perspective, you can do that. But that's what this company represents. There's a lot of goodwill built up between this company and its partners at NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, Apple, all the rest. And that is something that doesn't go away just overnight. Now, speaking of not happening overnight, the company is building three fabs in the great state of Arizona. And then they say the clean room there will be approximately double the size of a typical fab. They say they've made significant progress on that first fab in Arizona. 
and they're already engineering wafer production in April in the Node 4 process technology, and they're well on track for volume production by the first half of 2025. So by the time we get to this first quarter number where we're talking about 20% growth, $22 billion worth of revenue, well, they're likely all the way into volume production here in the United States. That is fantastic. Now, the second fab is going to utilize two nanometer technologies to support the strong AI demand. The last steel construction beam was raised into place and they expect volume production on the two nanometer process to begin sometime in 2028. And they also recently announced a plan to build a third fab in Arizona using two nanometer or even slightly more advanced technology that comes available over the next several years. And they expect production on this most advanced fab by the end of the decade. So you got a couple of more years there, but look, and by the end of the year, you're gonna have volume production at one of the largest fabs uh, really in the world right here in the United States. Now with TSM, we get a window into smartphone, IOT, automobile, obviously server and PC. And uh, the CEO just gave maybe one of the best quotes that you'll see. He says, yes, smartphone and market demand is seeing gradual recovery. So you're seeing gradual recovery in smartphone, but it's not a steep recovery. PC, which is personal computers, that has bottomed out at least from kind of a demand perspective. And the recovery though is slower. So that's gonna impact your Intel and AMD when they report their earnings here very soon. Obviously the smartphone, that's gonna impact Apple. And that's one of the reasons why shares of Apple just really haven't caught a bid all year. Now they said AI related data center demand, and I'll repeat here, very, very strong. So two varies on the strong. So when NVIDIA reports their earnings, I think maybe 30, 35 days from now, maybe even 40 days from now, you can expect NVIDIA's earnings will be very, very, very strong because that company is capturing the bulk of the AI data center demand. Now, interesting, he says that traditional server demand is slow. So this is your traditional ser uh, server and cloud servers at Google, AWS, even Microsoft. Oracle, they're saying not only he says demand is slow, but it's lukewarm. So you're not seeing a huge upgrade cycle there. They've pretty much had enough in terms of cloud. IoT and consumer remain sluggish and automobile inventories continue to correct. So basically, I think saying that they're oversupplied there. As it relates to smartphone, smartphone decreased 16% over the last year in terms of revenue contribution and not to beat a dead horse. That is the big reason why Apple, which relies mostly on smartphone demand and also PC demand, which is also recovering much slower than expected. We'll see if Apple is able to turn things around when they report their earnings here very soon. Now, jumping into the numbers, we had that $18.9 billion worth of revenue. That was 13% growth year over year. But again, subsequent quarters, we're expecting a uh, really much an acceleration here. What's great about this company is you grew your revenue by 16.5%. Your gross profit increased by 9.8%. Total operating expenses year over year increased 18.2%. So that gave you a strong 7.7% income from operations. So you, again, 16.5% top line growth equated to 7.7% growth on the income from operations from a quarterly perspective off of $18.9 billion. You print nearly $8 billion of operating income. That is really honestly as good as it gets. You can see why they don't necessarily have to squeeze the neck of NVIDIA. It's not like NVIDIA is going to go to some other fab that can make their computer chips anytime soon. Certainly TSM could squeeze them for another points of margin, but these numbers are absolutely fantastic. You pull down to a net income number. They don't bleed out cash any other way. You have $7.1 billion worth of net income. That was 8.8%. So about half of your revenue growth flowed all the way down to net income. That gives you some confidence as you start printing 22, 23, $22 billion worth of revenue in subsequent quarters. You're probably going to be printing north of $10 billion to that operating side. Now, from a cash flow perspective, it, it might even paint a more glorious story because this company has to recognize a large depreciation and amortization charge as they're building all these fabs and these factories. You have to recognize that. So you got your net income, get to add back in depreciation. You have a strong quarterly cash flow of nearly $14 billion. And yeah, you are spending a lot on these fabrication facilities. And maybe the only people that shouldn't look 
at these financials is the United States government, which I think just promised over $11 billion of grants and loans maybe to TSM. Well, they don't have to worry about cash flow. Off 13, nearly $14 billion of net cash, they only spent about 5.8 in the quarter on property, plant, and equipment. They paid some cash dividends, but overall, over just the last year, you increased the cash position at this company by over $7 billion, folks. So you had f nearly $14 billion of net cash, and you increased your cash by $7.4 billion. That means that almost all of this net income, this $7.1 billion, flowed to the cash side of the balance sheet. I think, I mean, look, and there's going to be people out there. Well, what if China invades Taiwan? That's always going to be a risk with this company. I've been along uh, alive long enough to know that's always going to be a risk. And I tell you what, if China invades Taiwan, your entire stock portfolio is going to take a dump, let alone TSM. You got to do a little risk to get a little reward in the stock market. And this is just one of the world's greatest companies. Not that we need to have our portfolio completely centered around TSM or all the technology stocks, but those numbers and financials are honestly about as good as it gets. Now, from a technical perspective, we've been on a long trend upward since 2008, steadily climbing this trend line, hitting this trend line. And any time that a stock like this just consistently hits this trend line, you know that, man, that thing is intact. And we're well above trend at the current time. We were well above trend during kind of that euphoria, government stimulus, pandemic semiconductor shortage 2020 2021 time frame we were well above trend came all the way back to trend i think tsm wants to revisit trend there's an absolutely fantastic area as you approach 108 109 just above 100 dollars per share there's a bed of support back here on the last consolidation period you would be converging also with your long-term upward trend line as well that's the first area. Would I wait till it gets all the way there? No, I'd probably want to start nibbling on this one in the one teen. So 115, 114, 118, somewhere in that range. That's where you start a position. You continue to kind of dollar cost your average back into like maybe the low 100s. If you get that shot, then you open up your full position and you hope this long-term trend line, which again has been intact probably longer than some of you guys have been investing you hope that holds and you continue to make maybe a new high sometime in 2025, maybe even 2026. You retest these areas, maybe 170, 180 on this one, and you go up 80% in maybe a two or three year period. That's how I'd play TSM. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. We'll be back again with more. I think Netflix reports in about 30 minutes and I'll see you again soon. Good luck with your investments.